If you start with a system at equilibrium, that equilibrium system can be stressed. For example, changing the temperature is a stress, or changing the concentration of some chemical is a stress. The system at equilibrium, we're going to picture that as a seesaw. And a seesaw, that level, is at equilibrium. Now, it's important to note that equal amounts of reactants and products is not the definition of equilibrium. So when we picture a seesaw that's level, one side could be heavier, so we could say we have more reactants and we have fewer products, but you can still balance the seesaw depending on where you put the fulcrum. So level seesaw is our equilibrium situation. When we stress it, that's for example, putting extra weight on one side or the other. So if I add weight to the right-hand side of the seesaw, now my seesaw looks like this, and it's going to try to reach a new equilibrium. The only way that this can reach a new equilibrium is if some of the weight that we added to the right gets shifted over to the left. And in terms of a chemical reaction, there are three options for the system to try to respond to that stress. All three options are always trying to minimize that stress. And this is called Le Chatelier's principle. The three options that a chemical system has is it can shift to the left, in other words products turn into reactants. It can shift to the right, meaning reactants are turning into products. Or perhaps the stress has no effect on the equilibrium and it's not going to do anything. So as an example, here's an equilibrium system between A, B, and C. Delta H is given as negative 50 kilojoules. And we want to know what happens if we start with the system at equilibrium. What's going to happen to the amount of C at equilibrium if we make different stresses? So the first stress is an increase in the temperature. So temperature is a stress that's related to delta H. And this delta H being negative, we know that this reaction is exothermic. So an exothermic reaction, we can write heat in as a product. If we increase the temperature, that's equivalent to increasing the amount of a product. We're putting more heat into this system. So our equilibrium that starts off level is going to be too heavy on the product side. The only way the system can get back to level is if the system uses up that extra heat carries out the reaction in reverse, so you can think of heat that we added reacts with C and it makes more A and B. So the answer to the question when the reaction shifts to the left, the equilibrium amount of C has to decrease. If we start at equilibrium and then we stress it in B, we increase the volume. Volume affects gases. The volume of the container does not affect solids and it does not affect liquids. So increasing the volume lowers the pressure. You know that from PV equals nRT. If we plug in a bigger volume, the pressure has to drop. So when the pressure drops, the system is trying to do the opposite. Le Chatelier's principle tells us whatever we stress the system with, the system does the opposite. So this is the stress lowering the pressure. The system tries to increase the pressure. And if we look at our equilibrium reaction, remember solids are not affected by the pressure, just the gases. So the reactant side has one mole of gas, while the product side has two moles of gas. The system can shift to the left or to the right in this case, it's trying to increase the pressure. And in PV equals nRT, a larger value of N gives us a larger pressure. So when the system is trying to increase the pressure, it's going to shift to the right, 
and shifting to the right means it makes more C, so the equilibrium amount of C increases. Stress C is adding a catalyst. Adding a catalyst has no effect on the equilibrium amounts of the chemicals because the catalyst just lowers the activation barrier. It doesn't change the equilibrium condition. The last three stresses are all about adding or removing chemical A. And chemical A is a solid. Solids do not appear in K. So if we stress this by adding some A, remember the concentration of a solid is independent of the amount. So adding a little bit of A or a lot of A is not going to have any impact. The same thing is true if we remove some A. The only way that the concentration of A is important is if we remove all of A. If we remove all of the A, then the forward reaction has to stop because A is needed to react with B. So removing some or adding some is not a stress, but removing all the A will mean that our seesaw is too light on the reactant side and the products have to make more reactants. Chemical C has to decrease for the reaction to respond to that stress.